Hi, my name is Mariah Hester and I'm here with Mary Hester. How are you today, Mary? I'm well, Mariah, thank you. So the first question is, how long have you been in real estate? I've been in real estate now for 14 years. I started off in the mortgage lending industry and um, soon after the housing crisis in 2006, I decided to explore more real estate. I'm actually working now with Keller Williams Realty and I do affordable home ownership for East Liberty Development. That's interesting, I never knew that. The second question is, why did you choose this as a career? Uh, I chose real estate for a career because I seen that I could be essential and be helpful with people as they desire and look for a home ownership. Um, there's a lot of tools necessary to be an informed buyer and um, as I worked through with people in the mortgage lending industry and financing, I seen that there was a, a need for someone to help them out on the real estate side. That's good. The third question is, how do you verify that a buyer is qualified to purchase a home? Um, there are quite a few things that you needed to consider and take into uh, consideration when someone is looking to get pre-approved for a home. Um, credit being the first thing. Um, if somebody is credit worthy of purchasing a home and getting a loan from a bank, you also want to take into consideration their budget, how much they can afford um, when they're looking for a, a, a home. Um, so their credit, their budget, um, how much money they have saved because there will be some down payment um, associated with, with purchasing a home. So those are the three things that you have to take into consideration. Once someone uh, has those three things uh, and they've met those, they, can, they go to the bank, they get a pre-approval, and then we start shopping for a home. That's good. The fourth question is, how many homes did you sell in the last year? Um, I've sold a number of homes. I couldn't give you a round number, and that is because I what I do is twofold. Um, Keller Williams, I'm an agent with them, and I also do um, community development with East Liberty Development. And what that entails is helping people pursue their dreams of home ownership um, through community engagement and community stabilization. Um, we have homes in the city of Pittsburgh that people um, feel that has been gentrified in East Liberty and um, in the city. So I work with people to um, get affordable home ownership through partnerships and collaborations with the city. That's excellent. The fifth question is, how do you attract new clients to your company? Uh, attracting new clients um, would be through word of mouth for what we do in East Liberty um, through partnerships with um, several different organizations and nonprofits. Um, we have people that are pursuing home ownership and they know that only there's only a, a small few um, organizations that can help them with affordable home ownership. So they seek out us, um, they seek out the information. We have workshops monthly to help them learn more about affordable home ownership and um, Social media. Social media always works. That's good. And the last question is, is, is explain how closing a deal happens or what documents are required to close a deal and who signs them. Um, a closing transaction is very complex. There are a lot of people involved. Um, you have the buyer and seller, of course, and then you also have your title company and your lender. So um, through the transaction, you work with several different entities, you, uh, the buyer, the seller, the title company, pools title, make sure that the home is free of judge, uh, judgments or liens. Mm -hmm. And then you have the bank who is working on getting the financing and working through underwriting to make sure that, that person is eligible to receive, um, to receive that loan. Um, when the closing transaction is ready to occur, you sit down with the buyer or the seller and go over all the documents that they will see at closing. You wanna make sure that there aren't any inconsistencies in the paperwork prior to closing. Um, the documents are all time sensitive, so once those documents are drawn up for closing, um, they cannot be changed. Okay. So you wanna make sure that your buyer or your seller is um, comfortable signing those documents. You don't want anyone at the table feeling uncomfortable signing something. And um, they sit down with the notary and they sign all of their documents, and it typically takes anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to get through a stack of documents, which includes um, a deed, and, and a mortgage from the, from the bank. That's good. And that's all for today. Let's take it back to the studio. Hi, today we're gonna to be doing a listing. I'm an assistant of Mary Hester. We'll be listing this. Time. So this is a three bedroom, one bathroom. So this is granite color tops, all new appliances, Samsung appliances, open floor plan.
much for coming out and seeing this listing today. Uh, we enjoyed having you. We enjoyed telling you more about our organization, what we do for a living. Uh, again, I'm Mary Hester with Keller Williams, also with East Liberty Development. And I'm Kishi Young with East Liberty Development. Thank you so much. For more information, please go to eastliberty.org. Good evening everyone, my name is Tyler Gallagher and I am live here at Phipps Conservatory with Jessica who is an employee here at Phipps. What do you do exactly here, Jessica? Hi, I am the Interactive Marketing Coordinator here at Phipps, work on our marketing team and handle all of our online content, so social media, e-blasts, updates to the website, things like that. Awesome, so I understand that there's a lot of different types of shows here, such as like the Orchid and Bonsai show and the Big Train show and the show in this room too. Would you like to elaborate on some of those that you do? Sure. So currently we are showing our Orchid and Bonsai show that lasts from January 18th until March 8th. And that show showcases a lot of our orchid collection as well as some of our tropical bonsai as well. Um, this show's theme this year is out of this world, so kind of focusing on otherworldly orchids, yeah. spacey theme. Um, I'm sure you've seen the giant planet of orchids in our palm court. I've seen so. some space things around <laughs> <Yes>. here. <yeah. laughs> and then, um, of course, the Garden Railroad, <laughs> which lasts until March 8th as well. Um, that year's this year's theme is farms, food, and family. So it's kind of focusing on different types of farming. So you have traditional farming um, and fun farming, like goatscaping, as well as some community gardens, things like that. And then lastly, we're standing here in Tropical Forest Cuba, which is an exhibit that changes out every three years. So right now, the main focus is on Cuba, and all of these plants are native to uh, the Cuban area. So we've kind of go there on a research trip, learn as much as we can, and then kind of bring that culture here to Pittsburgh. So you're surrounded by plants pretty often, I assume. Do you ever get tired of plants? Absolutely not. <laughs> you think you would, but on a cold day like today, it's nice to come in here and it's quite warm <laughs> and beautiful. So uh, one more question for you. What kind of care goes into taking care of all the plants you have here? Because I know there's a lot here. Yes. We have a dedicated horticulture staff as well as many volunteers who help us both care for the plants in general and then work on it, installing the shows and just making sure everything is all taken care of. We have many greenhouses to the back of the campus, uh, which aren't visible to guests, but I promise they are filled with plants. Um, so yeah, our dedicated staff really just makes this place magical. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time here today, Jessica, and I'm going to send it back to the studio now. Hi, my name is Luke Oday. I'm here with uh, Sydney Hopright at Foxes. How are you today, Sydney? Good, Luke. How are you? I'm doing well. So, Sydney, we're going to start off by asking you, uh, how long have you been in the business and how much do you like it? I've been with Foxes for over 19 years and um, I must like it if I've been here this long. So, it is fun and you can enjoy it. Yeah, seems like a good time. Uh, where was the first Foxes open and can you, give, can you give me a little background on that? First Foxes was opened in Pitcairn, uh, PA, uh, in, I believe in 1972 by Mr. Jim Fox Sr. And from what he told me, it was a very tiny little store um, that he could barely turn around in. And of course, over the years, the menu has elaborated, so stores have gotten bigger, and then they started delivery and all that. Yeah, so it started off as a small pizza shop. Very, now it's very. very big, yeah. So now Mr. Brutt has told me that you have a son, and he's opened stores in all, all kinds of different states. Can you elaborate more on that? Um, our oldest son went to school with Jimmy Fox Jr., and so they 
started opening stores locally together and then my son decided he wanted to move out west and see if he could expand the west coast which he did um, we had stores in arizona california um, he actually owned a store in arizona and um, and then came back and owned one here and um, eventually sold it because someone was interested in it but he still remains uh, somewhat involved with foxes wow so it's basically statewide you could say yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's gone all the way to the west coast down to florida east coast wow that's crazy so what does an average day at foxes look like like what goes on <laughs> it's a lot of work uh people think it's all fun but it is a lot of work you're on your feet a lot uh you obviously make pizzas make orders uh take phone calls uh and then there's always the prep work yeah seems very busy uh, how many how many different pizzas do you guys have and what usually goes on them uh, we have uh, what we consider gourmet pizzas and we have 10 of those and that ranges from uh, barbecue to ranch to um, the white pizza uh, so you know the toppings vary according to the the pizza and then beyond that we just have make you know make to order um, whatever you want on it yeah all right so last knee Lastly, what is your favorite pizza to make and what is your favorite pizza here at Fox's? It's actually one and the same. Um, <laughs> I like the uh, plain pizza because it's quick and it's easy. And honestly, I, lo I just love our cheese with our sauce. So right. that is my favorite pizza. Yeah, the original is always the best. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your time, Cindy. It was great talking and getting to know you and this magical place. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Alex. So how are you doing today, Alex? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So how long have you been working at the Crazy Mocha? Three months, about a couple months. Yeah. And how do you like working here? Um, it's different. I like it. It's a different pace than I'm used to. Um, it's a different setting than the kind of jobs I'm used to, but I enjoy it. It's a little, a little more laid back. Yeah. A lot more easier and chill than the camp counseling that I know you do. Yes. So do you know when the first Crazy Mocha opened up or where that happened? Um, I, I mean, it's a Pittsburgh company, so it's been in the area. I think the first one opened around like 2000, maybe 2002, so like early 2000s. So this is a pretty new place and just new? Um, overall, yeah. So how do you handle having a big rush of people? Um, I just try to remember that, well, yes, like people are here for a reason. It's just coffee, and at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I just try to get through it one person, one drink at a time, and kind of like do what I need to do, go through the routine, and you know, keep going. Yeah. So, the Crazy Mocha has a pretty crazy design of a goat. So, what inspired that? Um, so, there's this old story, and I've seen it like in other coffee shops about um, this like goat herder saw a goat eating some kind of berries, and the goat started acting crazy and dancing and he was like what is this and that's like where coffee beans came from and so i guess we pull it from that like you know goats ate coffee and found coffee and so like goat for our yeah. coffee company yeah makes sense so you make obviously a lot of different types of coffee what is your favorite one to make um i like iced drinks because you kind of get to add a little extra just because when it's iced, you have to like add extra espresso or extra syrups or whatever. So iced things are fun. Um, I hate smoothies. Those are the least favorite <laughs> to work to make. But um, yeah, I like making things with espresso. So what would you say is like the vibe or the feeling of the Crazy Mocha? Um, they're they're all pretty laid back. I've been to a couple stores here in downtown and um, you know over the city, and they're all pretty relaxed. Um, people come in and have you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings or like get-togethers with like old friends. I see a lot of people come in and have coffee, like old women who come in and like yeah. get together every week, so. So you said that you have a lot of people that come in and get together a lot. Yes. So do you have a lot of regulars that come in? Yes, especially during the week um, because a lot of people work in for UPMC down there and there's a couple other businesses. People are pretty regular in like, if it's a Tuesday at seven, like there's certain people who are here and during the week, like, you know, certain days, certain people are here. So yes. Yeah. So you get to know your customers more than most normal jobs. Yes. 
So you have this partnership with iFinko. What exactly is that and what do they do with that? So I don't know all of the details, but what I do know is um, we, there's a coffee pot for it back there. Um, Crazy Mocha is partnering with um, local coffee growers in Costa Rica, Costa Rica. Yeah. and um, it's just a way to kind of work with, instead of like large corporations, um, smaller smaller growers um, in a way to kind of give back and um, introduce people in Pittsburgh to like new types of coffee. Yeah, that sounds really nice and it sounds like it you know, helps out more people than mm -hmm. just what we know here. Yes. So what makes it so nice to work here? Um, tips are pretty nice. Uh, tips are a big plus and it's pretty, like I said, it's pretty laid back. So unless there's a rush, I'm kind of able to like take some time and you know get things done and I don't have to constantly be going 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 doing the interview yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right Alex thank you so much for your time now let's cool. send it back to the studio for more hi I'm here with Heather one of the customers that comes to the crazy mocha how are you doing today I'm good how are you I'm good thanks for agreeing to do this for us Sure, not a problem. so I'm assuming you've come to the crazy mocha before I have yes what keeps you coming back um their coffee is very good um it's local you know, it's a local company, so I like to support local yeah. businesses. It's always good to, you know, reach out and find the local businesses and stuff. Exactly. So what is your, like, go-to order that you always get? When I come here, um, they're one of the few that has a cherry syrup, so I always get a cherry mocha. Yeah, I've heard that it's very good here, but I've also heard that everything is good here. It so is. Yes. So how did you find out about the Crazy Mocha? Um, so I've been coming to Crazy Mocha since it opened, 10 plus years ago um the first one was in lawrenceville and i have friends that live in lawrenceville and we just started going local so yeah the coffee's good so it keeps you coming back exactly. <laughs> so on a scale of one to ten what would you rate the crazy mocha in comparison to other coffee shops based on you know service coffee food overall um i think the coffee is just as good if not better than starbucks i'm not a starbucks yeah. as a big starbucks fan um you know, it's not too acidic. I think, you know, the flavor's good. Um, I don't eat a lot of the food here, so I can't really judge on that. The cookies are good. I can say <laughs> that, the cookies are good. Um, but the, co the coffee and the tea is, is the stuff that I tend to come in for. Okay. So what, is, what do you think is like the overall atmosphere, the overall feel of the Crazy Mocha? I think it's a relaxed atmosphere. Um, it's welcoming. You know, it keeps the locals coming back. Yeah. Um, they've made a great presence for themselves in the Pittsburgh area, which is great. You know, it, it helps people to stay local and, and shop local. So, Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come interview with me. All right, we'll send it back to the studio for more. I'm here with Emily, for, who's a regular customer at the Crazy Mocha. So how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to agree to interview with us. You're welcome. So what keeps you coming back as the customer to here? I like the coffee. I like the espresso the and the, just the ambience and the fact that it is very local. It's very Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be a common theme. Everyone loves that it's a local place. So what is your go-to order? I like espressos and then I just get a nice coffee from time to time too. Yeah. Keep it in nice and simple. <laughs> so how did you find out about the Crazy Mocha? Well they're everywhere in, in Pittsburgh so there's one at the bottom of my office there's all over the place so I mean just walked in basically yeah. off the street. Just generally knew about it. Exactly. So how or why would you recommend this to friends or people that you know? It's good coffee. I mean, it's very good espresso. It's very good coffee. And it's just a nice place to be. It's, this one in particular is well lit. Yeah. All this, a lot of space. It's yeah. a good place. Nice place to get your work done and stuff, yeah. too. So on a scale of, like, 1 to 10, what would you rate overall, like, their coffee, service, just everything in general? Oh, I mean, 9 to 10 most of the time. They're, they're pretty good. They, they always seem to know what they're doing. Yeah. So what would you say is, like, the overall atmosphere or feeling of this? It's very relaxed, but it's very open. There's a lot of, I don't know, it's a very, it's just a very unique space, I think. Yeah. Nice place to, you know, I guess I'd get work done and everything. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to interview with us. And let's send it back to the studio for more.
Hello, I'm Mason Proskin, and today I'm here with Bo Venturino, Dana Crosby, here at Zone 28. So, what is Zone 28? Zone 28 is an uh, entertainment center that has a little bit of stuff for everybody. We have uh, kids, stuff for the families, games, laser tag, arcade, uh, a restaurant, bowling, um, escape rooms, plus stuff for the adults like bars, um, um. <laughs> Sounds like everything. I mean, yeah. what more could you ask You're for? What is Zone 28's hours of operation? Uh, we open at 9 o'clock every day. Um, the only day we close is Christmas Day. Um, and then on uh, Sunday through uh, Wednesday, we're up until 11 p.m. Thursday, we're up until midnight because the ladies' night. And then Friday and Saturday, we're up until 2 a.m. for all night bowling. Sounds fun. So what is your job here? Uh, I'm a manager. Uh, my area of uh, importance is I manage the bars, I manage the, the games and the prizes. How about you? I'm a bartender here. Uh, why should people come to Zone 28? I'm going to ask you that. Because it's fun, it's entertainment, you get good drinks, and it's a fun environment. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Where do you see the company in five years? Uh, we we'll keep on improving every every year with new new um, attractions and um, new technology. You know, we keep improving to get to be at the top of the line on these entertainment centers. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. We're gonna send it back to the studio. Hi, I'm Mark Lover, here with my mother, periodontist at Dr. Suzanne Coyne. Uh, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for asking. Uh, so what is your job title, and can you explain it? Yes, my job title is a periodontist, which is different than a general dentist. Uh, I specialize uh, to treat gum disease and place dental implants and tissue grafting, so... General dentists, more the fillings and dentures and, yeah. 
So your job's more exciting. I guess it is. In your opinion. In my opinion, yes. Okay. So where did you go to school? I went to University of Pittsburgh, undergraduate for three years. Got accepted into dental school a year early, uh, four years at Pitt Dental School. After dental school, I graduated and did a residency in Buffalo, New York at a hospital. Then I decided to specialize in periodontics. So I went back to the University of Pittsburgh for an additional two years to get my specialty degree. Wow, that was a ride, I bet. It was. Yeah. Uh, and what made you interested in becoming a periodontist? Well, I always knew I would do something in the medical field. Uh, I thought about physical therapy, thought about medical school, finally decided uh, on dental school. And then I was really happy I became a periodontist because uh, doing surgery and implants is, is much more exciting than just general dentistry for me. Awesome. That was great. Uh, and so is this the only office you've ever practiced at? This, uh, I purchased this building seven years ago, and I used to work in Forest Hills for about 19 years. So I've been practicing for about 25, 26 years now. And uh, do you practice anywhere besides here right now? Yes, I do work in another office for a group of general dentists, and uh, that I just do my specialty there for them uh, twice a month. Um, and what's your favorite part about being a periodontist? Um, being able to help, help patients, um, treating the patients, uh, especially with dental implants. People can have their own teeth again, be able to function and chew, especially in a population that's aging that needs good nutrition. And uh, finally, uh, is, do you think it's, you know, kind of hard to make patients feel like comfortable in a setting that is associated with Absolutely. I think I hear two out of 10 patients a day say they hate coming here. So, which I understand. Lots of people have had bad experiences when they were kids. So we offer sedation dentistry here also to make the patient comfortable. That was fantastic. Thank you for uh, being here uh, and letting me interview you and, and uh, you know, uh, getting some shots of the office. Uh, I'm Mark Lover. This is Dr. Coyne. I'm going to send it back to Rick Barat in studio. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Nick Nardo. I'm Nick Flinka. And uh, we're both TV3 students here at Plum High School. And uh, today we decided to head over to our work, Boys Park, to talk to some of our coworkers and fellow Plum classmates about life at Boys Park. Towards the end of this video, we are also going to show you guys some shots of the slopes and what it's like being outside. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and we'll see you at the end. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Nick Nardo. I'm back here. We're at Boys Park today, and I'm here with my fellow co-worker, Ben Tishko. Ben, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Nick. That's good. So I got a couple questions for you, Ben. First question I got, uh, what is a day at Boys Park like? So on the weekends, it's usually b busy. Like on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's usually busy. Week Weekdays, it's not busy at all. What days of the week do you think are the busiest here? Probably the weekend, so like Friday, Saturday night, and like Sunday night are probably the busiest. busiest here. Yeah, what happened? Probably Wednesdays because it's half off Wednesdays, so people come to get their money worth it's here. Yeah. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. And that's when all the tubers come. Um, and uh, what would you say is the worst hill to work on, and why? Um, definitely tubing, because like I said, you have to deal with a lot of people on tubing, and a lot of people don't listen, and that is the most frustrating thing in the world. Um, probably uh, tubing because there's a lot of people usually, and it's just it kind of gets boring after a while. Yeah, uh, I think the worst hill to work on is tubing because putting tubes in a crate are the worst thing ever. Is the worst thing ever. Why? Uh, maybe the bunny hill because people can't get on the lift right; they keep falling. Why? Bunny because the people always come out late on bunny. That's the way to get on the bad list here at Boys.
And uh, what is the most common question you get asked every day? Uh, why does the lift stop? <laughs> and uh, um, how do you sit on a tube? I can't tell you how many times I've been asked how to sit down on a tube. Well, that what type of snow did you guys make this year? <laughs> I can't. We actually fooled somebody into thinking that our snow here was plastic. Believe it or not, folks. And final question. Uh, what is the craziest thing you've ever seen here at Boys Park? Uh, probably when I hit a 180 off the jump. Uh, uh, one lady fell on the lift four, t four times. Can you explain like a little bit in depth? Uh, she said she was she got dizzy on the tube and lift magic carpet. Um, when Nick Flinko fell down the hill without his tube, and uh, Brady was behind him and ran into him. Uh, one time I was working at the bottom of the tubing hill, and I saw a lady go so fast, she flew over the one side of the hill and went down and like wiped out. That was pretty crazy.
right, guys. Well, there it is right there. You guys got to see a little inside scoop of the life of workers at Boyce Park. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Hi, I'm Ashley here at Steel City Indoor Go-Karting, and today I'm here with Reese. So, Reese, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Ashley. How about yourself? Pretty good. So, how long have you been working here and why? Um, I've been here for three and a half years. Um, and I, I love racing. Uh, I love the, the atmosphere of being around go-karts, motor racing, uh, and these uh, electric carts that we have, um, they're the forefront of technology, and that's my other passion is tech. Um, so I get to combine racing and technology uh, every day. I think it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. So what's your favorite part about working here? Um, my favorite part, I think, is just uh, the number of people that I get to meet. Um, I get to, to put all sorts of different people into, uh, into the carts and let them try something new. Uh, a lot of times people haven't done this before. And just the excitement um, from people, um, that's what I love. What goes on in the back with the go-karts? Uh, in the back, I guess, would be our staging area. Um, primarily what we're doing is, is we're briefing people, we're telling them not to crash, uh, and then putting them into the go-karts, giving them the safety instructions. Uh, I also have a full-fledged workshop, um, so we take care of all of the maintenance on the carts and everything in here, too. What is the most difficult thing to deal with with the go-karts? The most difficult thing to deal with. That's a really, really tough question. Um, I, I mean, I think that that no matter what, there's always going to be some sort of a struggle. Um, uh, I honestly don't have an answer for that. I'm, I'm really sorry, <laughs> but nothing on that one. You're good. So how do you accommodate with people who have special needs to ride the go-karts? We do whatever we can. Uh, you know, I think it's really important that, that everybody is given a fair shot. Um, you know, and, and we've got uh, various speed settings. Um, and so we're able to take special needs individuals and put them into the go-kart, um, keep them on a slower speed and give them a little extra uh, TLC um, to give them that uh, wonderful experience that they've been told time and time again that they could never be able to do. Um, and we're able to provide them something different um, than anything else. Well, that's great. What is the routine for opening and closing the track? Uh, opening and closing, we just have to uh, ultimately, I mean, turn everything on, shut everything off, um, it lights. Uh, we have to make sure every morning that the carts are uh, in proper working condition. Uh, so we'll get one hot lap in each cart, a um, little perk to the job. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that way uh, we're able to make sure that, that all the carts are up to our standards um, and, and that they're going to be safe for the public to operate. And then one last question. What's the record for the most amount of races put in one day? Um, so the highest number of races we've done in a single day, we knocked out 75 races. We hosted an event called the Mushroom Rally, um, and we decked the whole building out with Mario Kart. It's very, very cool. A lot of people. Um, so, yeah, about 75 races, averaging eight or nine people. Uh, I believe the record we set set that day was 530 um, rides, 530 people through the carts. So that was a solid day for us. Oh, that sounds really fun. Yeah. So thank you, Reese. And now let's head back to you guys. Thanks very much.
Hi, I'm Gia Tavella, TV3 student at Plum High School. Today I'm here with Jen Kowalkowski, the owner of Dev's Threads. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for asking. Uh, when did you take over the business and why? I took over the business April 1st of 2019 and the reason I took it over was because I was um, looking for a challenge and my degree is in marketing and business and that way it took me back to what I went to school for. That's great. What does a typical day look like for you here? Every day is different here. Um, I can come in at 8 o'clock and be done by noon or I can come at 7 o'clock and be here till 6 o'clock at night. So every day is different and Basically, you know, we come in, we get the job started, we do the, the computer work, I give it to Angie, Angie does the embroidery, we do the screen printing, so we can do a little bit of work with the people that do the screen printing, so we can do a little bit of everything. Sounds like a pretty busy day. And what is the busiest time of the year for the company and why? Christmas, of course, because everybody's buying Christmas presents, you got basketball season going, you got that baseball was already you know doing orders so the sports are going on so Christmas is definitely the busiest time uh, what is the best part of your job and why the best part would be the best part would be um, seeing people's you know dealing with people seeing them talking to them about their jobs and then seeing how happy when they how they turned out um, so that would basically be the best part and the flexible hours some um, but that's also a disadvantage too because we, I have to be here for when the customers need me to be here. Sounds pretty good. Are there any challenges that come with your job? Um, challenges that come with the job? Yes. Mostly um, pleasing and working. Sometimes the best part of my job is working with people, and sometimes the worst part of your job can be working with people. So it's a little bit of both. I understand that. What is it like owning your own business and only having one helper? Oh, I don't only have one helper. I have definitely, my main helper is Angie Wilson. And then um, I have um, her daughter, Nicole Wilson, who comes in at Christmas time and she helps out whenever we can. I have Stefa Coot who comes in and works with the books. I have Jess Linden who lives up in Johnstown that does my stores, um, that my online stores. I have my husband, Raph Kolinkowski, that comes and does all my running around for me. And Tyler empties the garbage. <laughs> Sounds like you have a pretty great crew. And one last question. What is your favorite memory that you have since you started working here? I'd have to say my favorite memory. Um, you know, I've only been here nine months, so I'd have to say my favorite memory would be... Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Now let's set it back to the studio. Williams, I'm here with Chef Dawn at 80 Acres. I'm going to be asking a few questions today. So first one, what are your hours of operation? We are open, we're closed Mondays, open Monday through Friday, lunch and dinner. Saturday's just dinner and then um, Sunday we open at 11 o'clock for brunch and then uh, we serve dinner also on Sundays. All right. Uh, when did you start the business? We've been, in March, we will be open for, we'll have been open for uh, six years. Uh, what are some of your menu specials? Uh, every evening we do three different specials, usually a fish or seafood special, and tonight we have walleye. Um, and then we also do some kind of other protein, usually some kind of steak or chicken. And tonight we have a hanger steak, and then uh, a sh uh, shrimp risotto with mushrooms we have tonight. Sounds good. Uh, what's your favorite menu item? Uh, Probably whatever fish we have on special. Walleye, it comes from uh, Lake Erie, so it's pretty delicious. Uh, what's most important to, to you for your business? The most important thing about business, especially hospitality business like a restaurant, is the guest and making sure they're taken care of, make sure that you know, the um, property's clean for them when they come in, make sure the service is good and food gets to them promptly and hot. Um, 
Oh, those, are those are the most important things, taking care of the guests. Uh, what is a typical day running 80 acres? Uh, generally, I get here around 8 o'clock in the morning, and we get deliveries, and I have to you know, put the deliveries away, whether that goes in the walk-in or dry storage. And then we go right into uh, setting up the, um, the kitchen for getting ready for business, prepping food, whatever needs to get cooked, making soup, making um, bolognese. You know, there's, uh, in a restaurant, the list is never ending as, as things to do. And then when the rest of the staff comes in, they do whatever they have to do to get their sections ready, including like the front of the house, folding napkins, setting the tables, they polish silverware, polish the glasses. You can talk to Dylan a little bit more about some of the stuff that's involved in the front of the house getting it ready. Uh, any special events you guys have at 80 Acres? We do quite a few special events. Um, Friday, our Saturdays were closed for lunch, so we do a lot of bridal showers and baby showers here for that. And then um, we do um, like a lot of Christmas parties during the holidays. People come in for their birthdays, you know, sometimes big families, just something, something small. Uh, rehearsal dinners occasionally. We've done, we even closed the whole restaurant where people bought it out for like a wedding. So pretty much we'll do anything. Sounds good. Uh, final question. Five years from now, where do you see yourself in the business? Well, hopefully we continue growing and, you know, the business getting bigger. Uh, by then I'll be almost on my way out to retire, so sell it. I'm not sure what the ultimate goal is, but five years, mostly just to continue the same as we're doing now, except get better, bigger. All right. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Back to you, Mr. Barad. Hi, I'm Tommy Kennedy, and I'm here with Dylan Tarquinia, and we have a few questions today. Uh, first, Dylan, how long have you been working here? Um, I've been here for a little bit over two years. Uh, what's your favorite part about working here? Um, I think my favorite part about working here is probably the staff. They're really nice. We all get along together. I always have a great time when I come in for the job. Uh, what's your favorite food here? Favorite food? Um, I think favorite food is probably the, the bison burger, the buffalo bison burger. It's really good. Side of fries. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. And what do you do here? Um, so I have two jobs here. Uh, my first job is a busser. So basically what I do is once people get up, uh, I go up, clean their stuff off the tables, reset it for the next customer. And then my second job is dishwashing. Self-explanatory. All right, well, thank you for the time. That's all the time we have today. Back to the studio. I'm Karina Crawford and I'm here, TV3 student from Plum High School and I'm here at Leilua's Pizza interviewing the owner, Peyton. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What are your specialty pizzas that you have here? Um, we have like 15 to 20 different ones. Um, so I guess I'd narrow it down to like the top three that we sell, which is probably the white pizza, um, the chicken bacon ranch, and probably the Splitsburg. Those all sound really good. What is the hardest part of your job? Um, the fact that I'm the owner, so pretty much everything, I guess, dealing with angry customers is probably up there, keeping everybody happy, staff and employees, well, staff and customers, not employees. Sounds hard. What made you start working here? Um, I actually started working here like seven years ago. Um, the guy that previously owned this was like a friend of the family, so kind of fell into it from there. Other than pizza, what are some of the customers' most popular things they order? Um, there's actually something on the menu called a Peytonator. That's pretty popular. It's a sandwich, but we wrap it in pizza dough. 
Um, and then Valentine's Day, with that coming up, that's probably one of our biggest days of the year where we do heart-shaped pizzas and pizza roses. Those both all sound really good. So what is your position in this job? Um, like you stated earlier, and I said uh, I'm the owner. I've been the owner for four years now. What is your favorite part of working here? Um, I guess that goes in hand again with my staff and my customers because I do have a really good crew working for me, and good customers definitely outweigh the bad customers. That's nice. What is your favorite pizza to make? Mm, my favorite pizza to sell is the Splitsburg. It's not necessarily my favorite to make, but it looks really pretty. And you can get two pizzas, and there's garlic knots down the middle, so that's probably my favorite. That sounds cool. Can you still enjoy eating pizza after working in the shop for so long? Oh, yeah. I could literally eat pizza every day. Anytime we have a mess up, I end up eating it. So. All right. Thank you so much, Peyton. And now let's send it back to the studio. Justin Bartley from Plum Heap Senior High School. How are you doing today, Justin? Uh, not so bad. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. When did the Boyce Ski Logs first open? Uh, back in the 70s. It's been here for a while. Are you talking about this season or is it originally? <laughs> I mean, this season we opened in December, but it's been around since. Do you personally ski or snowboard yourself? Uh, I do both. Working here, I was able to learn how to do both of them, so a little bit of a job perk. It's good. How did you get into skiing slash snowboarding? Uh, a couple of my friends did it and then working here too. Kind of gets boring every now and then, so just take a couple of skis from the run room and teach yourself. Sounds pretty good. When you first started working here, what was it like? Uh, it was fun. Uh, a lot of the people that I worked with are still around too, so I made a couple friends and, you know, pretty easy job. Good, uh, good environment. What gave you interest in working here at the lodge? Uh, I used to landscape, so I, was, uh, I didn't have a job over the winter and somebody told me about this. So I gave it a shot and been here for like six years now, so it's fun. What are some factors that affect the slope and how people ski or snowboard? Uh, so skill factors, uh, definitely, you know, if you don't know how to ski, it's a little bit, you know, harder. Uh, other than that, just rain, snow, temperature, so uh, it'll affect the snow and make it harder or easier to ski out there. Is there any changes coming to the lodge anytime soon? Uh, no time soon, other than, you know, just some scheduling changes and stuff like that, but pretty much same old, same old here. It's pretty good, and that's all we have for today. Rylan Kramer, senior from Plum Senior High School, here with Max Majaka, also senior from Plum Senior High School. How are you doing today, Max? Pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Now, when did you start working here, and do you like it? I started working here in November. No, December 15th. And yes, I, I love this job. That's nice. How many hours do you work here a week, and do you get the amount that you would like? Yes, I work 110 hours in the next two weeks, so it's pretty good for a high school job. It's a lot of hours. 
What do you do here and how hard is it? I usually do rentals, so um, I just like pass out boots whenever they need it and uh, it's really easy to do. When did you, do you happen to snowboard or ski yourself? Yeah, I snowboard. When did you start snowboarding and why did you start? Started in fourth grade because my dad got me a snowboard for Christmas and uh, just been doing it ever since. It's nice. What is your favorite part about snowboarding and why? Probably the rails because it's fun, it's just like an adrenaline rush. That's all the time we have. Back to you in the studio, Mr. Barat. Here with Vincent, a manager here at Peace, Love, and Little Donuts. How are you today, Vincent? I'm great. How are you, Josie? I'm great. Thanks for asking. All right, what are your hours of operation, Vincent? Uh, we open at 6 a.m. Monday through Saturday, and we close at 2 p.m. Monday through Wednesday, and then 6 p.m. the rest of the uh, days during that. And then Sunday, we open at 8 a.m. and close at 4 p.m. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit of the company's backstory? Yeah, so uh, Peace, Love, and Little Donuts, it's actually a franchise, but they're individually owned. So we're owned by Grace Life Church, and uh, it's truly a blessing to be owned by them because uh, we're not just about the bottom line here. We're about people, and uh, we want to see people come in here and experience uh, the love of Jesus and just share that with everybody that walks through this door. But uh, as far as Peace, Love, and Little Donuts is concerned, I think it's really unique uh, to have these little donuts with all the different toppings, and it's really fun. And kids get to uh, look and see how the donuts are made through the window. So I think it's a really cool business idea, and it, it's very fun to work here. Awesome. What sets your donuts apart from others? Yeah, well, we have bacon on a donut. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we also have uh, Girl Scout cookie donuts and all these crazy Oreos and cheesecake, and uh, I think that pretty much does. But uh, as well as just, you know, like I said, just being owned by the church and uh, people coming in here, and, uh, you know, we pray over a ton of people in here and, and see lives change, really. You know, just they walk in here hurt, and uh, they come in here, they, they leave joyful and blessed because Jesus, Jesus' love just touched them. And it's, it's truly amazing, and it's a blessing to be able to work here. That's great. All right. How long have you been in business here? Uh, a little over three years now, actually, we've been at this location. And a quick little side note, this, this place here, this little dome, was actually a cheese house before, a uh, dry cleaners, auto parts store. So uh, definitely a lot of business has been through here, but I think it's the best uh, having a donut shop here. Yeah, that's really great. 
All right, what's the training like to become an employee here? Well, you start out, when I first started here, I looked at all these donuts, I said it's going to take me three months to learn any of them. But, uh, you know, we come in here and we just kind of give them a tour of the whole place and uh, explain what we're all about, our core values, and, um, you know, how we're more than a business here, like I was explaining earlier. But, you know, we teach them how the donut machine works. It's pretty intricate and cool how that works. But, and then we take them over towards the back and show, show how we flip all the toppings every day and keep everything fresh as possible. Then we'll take them up here and show them the different lattes and cappuccinos that we make and coffees. And, uh, then we move on to the donuts, and we'll have uh, we'll have the people shadow us, and then we'll eventually they'll make them on their own. So uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. It takes about you know a week or two to truly understand how this place works, and then we get people in motion. Yeah, sounds like a lot of hard work. Well, what's the most interesting donut you've created here? Well, I don't know if it's interesting, but my favorite donut personally is I like the mocha icing, and I put uh, powdered sugar, chocolate chips. Uh, pretzels and then a chocolate drizzle on so it's pretty loaded and it, it tastes amazing I, I think it goes so great with chocolate milk awesome what would you say is the most popular donut here definitely the maple bacon the maple bacon super I actually haven't tried it yet just because I'm a little I mean I feel like I need to now because everybody orders it but that's definitely the most popular all right thanks so much for talking with us today Vinny come check out peace love and little donuts off route 22 Anything else you want to say? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today, and I appreciate it, and we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks so much. Back to the studio.